Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. Today we are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today we are talking about Baxter International Incorporated, ticker BAX. First up, this company is in the healthcare equipment and supplies industry. Over the next five minutes, I'll discuss both the valuation of this company and my thoughts on its business quality. This company is $36 billion in size. They develop and provide healthcare products. What this includes is dialysis, hemidialysis, therapies, intravenous therapies, infusion pumps, sets, um, many different devices, looks like both internal devices and, and maybe some external devices. Um, but the medical device industry is typically pretty good, um, but but maybe it's competitive. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. The beta 0.59 is interesting because it tells me maybe the company is a little higher quality, a little lower volatility, and that could be very good for us. So return on invested capital. First thing that I notice is that you have 20 straight years of profitability. Always a good sign when you have 20 straight years of profitability. There's no negative numbers here. Positive for determining its business quality. However, there, these numbers jump around a lot. I mean, from 2002, you're at 10%, then you're down to 4.9. You get up to 20% by 2009, and then you quickly bump back down to 5% in 2015. You get a big boost in 2016. That looks like a fake number. Um, but otherwise, you also see kind of a negative drop in return on invested capital since 2009. So in 2009, you were in 20%, 2011, 18%, 2014, 14%, 2018, 12%, and by 2021, 6%. So you've had this declining for about 13 years. You've had declining return on invested capital. This is a very negative trend. You don't like to see that. In addition, at the current returns on invested capital, you're outside of this double digits. You like to see 10% plus, and we're at 6 7%, and that's just a little low for me. So when I look at the 10-year median returns, they look attractive. 10% return on invested capital, 16% return on equity. Those are good numbers, but as you can see, it's declining. So the future looks less good than the past, and that's where I'm concerned. And this is a major concern when you look at these valuation ratios of 34. A 34 PE needs to be reserved for companies that are growing very, very rapidly and have very high returns on equity, very high returns on capital. And we don't see either of those here because what you see in the 10-year Kager is revenue Revenue has been declining, actually has gone down over the last 10 years, and assets keep growing. And what that's going to do is exactly what you see here is your, your earnings per share is going to go down, your free cash flow is going to go down, your return on invested capital is going to go down because your assets are growing while your revenue isn't. And so you're going to just see lower and lower returns over time. All of this makes me feel really bad about the valuation. This makes me think the valuation is very bad. That, to deal with a company with negative revenue, you need to have a valuation of like a PE of seven or eight. Something in that range would maybe justify a negative revenue company. And that's gonna be regardless of your return on equity. Your returns on capital are almost irrelevant if you're shrinking because you should be pulling capital out of the business, but instead you're seeing the capital grow in this business. So this company, it, there's very little we're going to be able to see in the rest of it that really justifies a price like that. Now, if you're enjoying this analysis so far, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that subscribe and ring the bell in order to get notifications as I upload new videos each and every week on investing, analyzing stocks. So when we look here, we can see that at the beginning of the decade, you had 33% return on equity, but at the end, you're at 14%. So these numbers have just been decreasing over time. You had 13.9 billion in revenue, and then you end up with 12.7 billion in revenue. Your gross margin's getting destroyed. You started out at 51%, 39%. All of this is suggesting that the quality of the business is going down over time. You're facing a lot of competition. When we go into the income statement, we can possibly see what's happening here. Um, SG&A is relatively flat, but you've had declining gross profits, and so that's killing your operating profit line. R&D, they've been able to reduce, but you're still getting lower and lower profits over time. Now, shares outstanding. They've managed to de 
to drop the shares outstanding, but not fast enough. So you still have EPS declining over time, basically being cut in half over the course of a decade. That's very, very bad. Now, PP&E is relatively flat. You had 5.5 billion, you end at 5.8 billion. That's okay. But you can clearly see the assets are going up because what they've done here is goodwill. They're probably making big acquisitions to try and stay alive. And you saw a big jump in assets from 2020 to 2021. That's probably an acquisition when you increase it by 13 billion in a single year. Um, and so I think that's where you're seeing this big concern. Let's see. So again, look at this. Your, your shareholders equity has gone up almost 50% despite the fact that you've lost half your earnings. So cash flow compensation, they're paying stock-based compensation all the time. They are diluting you. They do buy back some shares of stock, but you can see they made a $10.5 billion acquisition. And yet during that time frame, they're having cash flow from operations only $2 billion. So they, they put five years of cash flow from operations into this acquisition and they're not seeing the returns yet. Maybe it makes the returns in the future a little bit better, but they've taken on a lot of debt in order to pull that off. If we go back to the balance sheet, you see this long-term debt has gone up 4X over time. You went from 4.7 billion to $17 billion in debt. And that $17 billion means you basically have almost negative equity in this company from a tangible basis because these are intangible assets of 7.7, Goodwill's intangible assets. And so you have more debt than tangible equity. This is a negative tangible equity. This company doesn't have a margin of safety. For me, I'm out. I'm going to avoid it. Um, Baxter International. Wouldn't make my watch list. The valuation simply too high. I would not consider a company like this unless the PE was less than eight. Um, I'm not going to consider a company with declining revenue while still growing your assets. Lots of negative signs here. So for me, Baxter, B-A-X is an avoid. If you liked my analysis here, hit that like button. Please subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notifications as I upload new videos each and every week about investing and studying individual stocks. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.